uh, hit, hit record. Okay, it says we're live and uh, uh, I'm going to assume we're live. I can't see me on my phone yet, but hello everyone. It's Tuesday, it's Facebook Live. It's four o'clock Pacific, seven o'clock Eastern. I'm in the Eastern time zone today. One o'clock in Poland for Marzi, who's hosting this. 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in Western Australia, 9.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in Eastern Australia, and I don't know what time it is in Indonesia. Maybe somebody will tell us, but hello, it's Facebook Live. And <laughs> <laughs> we've got great guests today. I'm so excited to have my friends, Michelle and Keith Norris, who are the founders of Paleo FX, the largest conference in the world about the whole topic of paleo and paleo diets and paleo lifestyles and and all of that so we're in for a thrill and uh um and first michelle and keith um many of our people probably really don't know what paleo is you know they've heard about it and can can you just can you do an overview and and uh of what what is paleo uh, yes, absolutely. So for us, paleo is really uh, about the lifestyle. It's not just about the diet. And at Paleo FX, we believe in seven pillars of health. So our conference covers these seven pillars, which is physical health, mental health, emotional health, relational health, spiritual health, financial health, and tribal health. So you really need to have all seven of those things for you to be a really holistically healthy person. And nice. so we come at paleo effects and then some so we talk about regenerative agriculture we talk about um, decentralization of markets of education we talk about um oh my gosh uh just about everything you can biohacking you name it we talk about it and really it's about removing all the toxins from your life it's about the things that um don't serve you and so we want we're not in reenactment of caveman days a lot of people kind of get that wrong and so basically what it is is we take cues from our ancestors about how they lived and how it was a little bit more simple time. Um, but we use our modern um, technology to be able to benefit us now. But with unnatural light and um, processed foods, refined carbohydrates, we realize that those are the things that modernity has brought in and it, with it brought in the diseases of modernity, like diabetes, heart disease, that type of thing. And so we want to undo those things and make the most of like our sleep. And so we'll talk about all of that kind of stuff at Paleo FX and of course, brain health and- um, Gut brain connection, gut brain, which, is, yeah. which is a hot topic these days and for good reason. Yeah. I mean, fascinating <laughs> subject that, that science and your, yourself, Dr. Tom, you guys shine the light on this. It's such an interesting, interesting topic. Yeah, it really is. It really is. You know, and um, you guys and for all of our people watching and um, this is the couple, these are the people who have taken the concept of paleo out of the caveman concept, right? Although, you know, if you look at Keith, he's packing some pretty good uh, biceps there, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is a great thing to do. Uh, everyone doesn't have to do that to to. Um, try some paleo aspects to living life. You know, you, you don't have to do it, but if you want to, it's a great thing to do. Um, but this is the couple that has really brought credibility to some of the early concepts of our researchers like Dr. Lauren Cordain, who would talk about some of these concepts 20, 25 years ago, and he was really an outsider and uh, he wasn't acknowledged the way he could have and should have been for these pioneering concepts. And it's Keith and Michelle who have put together these conferences that take it to a whole nother level. So before we do more of a deep dive, let me do some shout outs here. Uh, Lindalu is in California. Uh, Terry's in San Diego. Uh, Donna says just hi, Dr. Tom and Michelle and Keith. That's great. Claudine's in Carlisle. Uh, Eileen's in the Irish Republic with a waving hand. Hi, Irene, Eileen, wow. and thank you for staying up. I know it's uh, midnight there. I believe it's midnight. Thank you so much for staying up. Or what are you doing up so late, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lynn's in South Australia, and it's 10.30 a.m. Wednesday in South Australia. See, I'm thinking East and West Australia, and but we're in South Australia where it's 10.30. Well, thank you, Lynn, for joining. 
Uh, Mary's in Tampa. Uh, I just left Tampa. Uh, Amal's back. It's great to be back for another Facebook Live. Thanks, Amal. And uh, Jacqueline's here from British Columbia. Uh, uh, another Jack. Jack is from Oklahoma. And the list goes on and on. Dana says hello from Nebraska. So thank you guys. And I'll keep doing shout outs to you. And like I've told you before, all those little hearts you do, you know, and the thumbs up and things, and that just keeps me going. And so I'm fired up. So let us know that you're out there. Okay, so Michelle, tell us about this next conference that's coming up. It's in um, April, isn't that right? Yes, it is the last weekend of April. And um, something that we love, uh, Austin is beautiful to visit during that time. So mm -hmm. not just the conference, but the actual cities, a lot of fun um, and a really great place to visit. We end up getting a lot of people who decide to move here after they come to the conference. Of course, by August, when the temperatures are in the triple digits, they're like, wait a minute, what happened to that really beautiful? Right. Right. <laughs> it gets right. a little bit hot here. Right. So um but we, um, the conference this year, really excited about what we have going on. And um, Dr. Tom will be um, on Friday morning when we open up and will be one of our first speakers. Starting off with a bang. Yeah, so we're really excited about you coming. And um, you're going to be talking about how you can fix your brain, which is something that Keith and I are definitely really interested in. Um, we're both APOE 3-4, so we've been doing a lot of research around that and trying to do all the things that help us um, stay healthy and keep us from getting Alzheimer's, which... Um, so let, me, let, let me stop there for our audience. APOE 3-4, what does that mean? You get a gene from your mother and a gene from your father that's associated with your vulnerability to certain diseases, in this case, Alzheimer's, and they're called the APOE gene. And you can be a two, a three, or a four. So you, you get a two from your mother or a two from your father, a three from your mother, three from your father. So you can be a two, 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 three, two, four, three, 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 four, or four, four. The danger is those that have one or two fours. That uh, David Perlmutter told us um, a few years ago that if you live to the age of 85, you have a 50% chance of developing Alzheimer's. Now it's worse than that now, but that was a few years ago. But for this example, if you had one four, that risk is 90%. And if you have two fours, that risk is 90% by the age of 65. Now, that's pretty freak out material. However, we now know that those genes don't dictate you're going to get anything. Those genes dictate that you're vulnerable to getting something. And what makes you vulnerable is the environment that you live in, which means the air you breathe, the sheets that you use, your, dry, your clothes going into a dry cleaners with toxic chemicals, you breathe those chemicals. But the most important environment is what's on the end of your fork. That's most important. Now, this is close to my heart because when I did these tests for me, I was a 3-3. And that's the average. And, you know, I just did a, whew, I, and I noticed that I did that. I didn't think, oh, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter because I know uh, how to hopefully prevent it. But I, I noticed that I still breathed a sigh of relief when I was a 3-3, when I found out I was a 3-3. But both of my children are 3 fours. So that made it really important right away for me to dial this stuff down because my ex's father and his two brothers and his two sisters, so my ex's two uncles and two aunts all died of Alzheimer's. Wow. So my ex certainly is a four because I'm not, and she may be a four, four, perhaps she hasn't tested. But because my kids have this, my kids are just like you guys. And so it's really important to dial it down. And now um, I just want to do this little bit and then we'll come back to it. Now I tell everyone, um, if you have any family history of cognitive decline or dementia of any type, you do the test to see. Because if you do the test and it comes back positive, you've got one or two fours. My term for it is that I'm going to read you from the book of life. Now here's the stats on this. This is a weak link in your chain. Your brain's a weak link in your chain. 
And so you have to learn how your lifestyle pulls on the chain and change that lifestyle because it's too high a percentage. You're going to have a problem if you don't adjust your lifestyle. So now at the conference, we're going to be talking a lot about this concept. And yes. now, Michelle, please continue. I'm sorry. I just want to jump in so our, our people you, know all about this. And Dr. Tom, just to add insult to injury in my own case, mm -hmm. not only am I 3-4, but I also played football all the oh, way through. Yeah. And yeah. I do in the offseason, I kickboxed. <laughs> so I didn't do myself any favors cognitively. So I've yeah. really got to dial this in. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And why why uh, Keith is saying that, everyone, is because head trauma, we now know. Do you know the study came out from the Journal of the American Me Medical Association, I think it was two years ago, 98% of all NFL players have evidence of CTE, the disease that causes NFL players to uh, develop dementia from the trauma of football. 98% of them. It was something like 54% of college football players and something in the 30s, I don't remember the number, for high school football players. If they played high, uh, football in high school, 25 years later, when they check them, they've got evidence of CTE going on in their brain. So for all of you that are listening to this, you have young kids, you think twice about contact sports that involve head trauma. You know, it's, it's, it's a different world now. We know more than we knew back then. Uh, so it's really important to dial that information down. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's really important since we do have the information that parents that want their kids to play football or you know rugby or whatever the case may be, even um, in some cases baseball. Our son played baseball, and right. there you know there's head injuries in baseball as well, so, or hockey. That's another one. So I would definitely now that I know what I know, I, if I had it to do over again, our particularly for our boys, we would have had them tested and made a decision probably for neither one of them to um, play football or rugby or hockey or any of those things. So right. certainly something for parents to really consider because, and this is the thing too, is that, you know, a lot of people freak out over getting the thing, but like you said, this is just a roadmap to know whether or not you need to change your lifestyle. It doesn't mean you're definitely going to get this. This is just knowing what you're genetics are predisposed for so that you can make changes. And that was a thing for us is we were paleo. We were really pretty strict paleo. So we were doing a lot of saturated fats thinking that we were doing ourselves favors with, you know, our, with our brain and cognition health. And when in fact we were actually doing damage, if we had not known or not taken this test, we could still be doing a lot of damage. And now we, you know, eat a modified Mediterranean keto diet a lot more monounsaturated fats, a lot less saturated fats, but that doesn't mean saturated fats are bad for everyone. It's just these people, you know, with this kind of, uh, with a four, you need to watch that kind of thing. So anyway, we're um, super excited that you're going to be coming and you're going to be talking about this stuff. We also have Dale Bredesen coming this year. And of course, David Perlmutter will be back and Steve Gundry. And so, and unfortunately you have to leave us, um, but I wanted you to be on this panel with them because we're going to do an epic brain panel, but you have to go. So, um, and I'm hoping that um, we'll make this up next year and that we'll be able to do another panel next year. Or that year. you can rearrange your schedule. Yeah, and, well. Yeah, just kind of hang out for a little bit. <laughs> when, anyway, when, when, is, when is the panel? Saturday afternoon. So, oh, yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway, so that is one of the things that we're really excited about this year is this particular panel because brain health is so important and especially as it relates to your gut health and, yeah. and all of that and the, the access between the two, um, super important connection. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And folks, um, if any of you have family members with dementia and there's, uh, uh, I would almost wager if that's the case then there's a little bit of terror in the back of your minds that you don't go there very often. You know, you'd rather not talk about it or think about it. And I am strongly of the opinion that when you do the proper testing to see if you carry that weak link, that's the wake up call. And the wake up call means, okay, I'm going to have to learn what are the markers that I need to be aware of that will tell me if my lifestyle is taking me in the wrong direction. 
because the gene doesn't say you're going to get the problem. The gene just says this is the problem you will get if you pull on the chain too hard. And so you have to see, are you pulling on the chain too hard right now? And how do you do? Well, there's tests for that. You've all heard me talk about this, and it's in the book. You can fix your brain uh, uh, on many, many pages, the test to look for, do I have inflammation in my brain right now? So this conference that's coming up, the entire emphasis here, and this is not just for doctors and practitioners. This is for the general public, which makes it so great. And as Michelle was saying, Dr. Dale Bredesen, the um, I would say he's the godfather of uh, functional Alzheimer's research. Uh, he's the guy that wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's, and in 2014 published his first paper for all of us, many papers before that, but the first one that said, hey, here's 10 Alzheimer's patients, and we reversed it in nine of them, nine out of 10. And so that just woke everybody up, and that was six years ago. So there's been a lot of advancement since then. And now Keith and Michelle have uh, Dr. Dale Bredesen coming and one of my mentors, Dr. David Perlmutter, who is just brilliant in functional neurology. So it's going to be a great event. So who else is coming to this one? So we have um, the normal cast of characters, Rob Wolf, Mark Sisson, Chris Presser, Nora Gigaudis. Um, and then we have like JJ Virgin will be there. Um, please, I'm Ben Greenfield. Wow. Uh, there's a hundred speakers. There's over a hundred right. speakers. So it's hard to keep it, you know, be able to say, but you can go to the website. Almost everybody's on the site now. We only have a couple of speakers that we made some changes with them. So their stuff that will be on this week. And so we'll be making some um, final uh, speaker announcements, but there's um, over a hundred speakers. So it's a really great conference. It's a Ex lot of fun. Experts in each one of those seven pillars. Yes. So it, Marvelous. It, right. And it is, uh, you know, this event is not just information intake. It is also a place for the tribe to come, to come together. It's a one time of year when everybody that's like-minded uh, in this realm can come together, rub shoulders, hang out, have face-to-face -face discussions. Mm -hmm. And a lot happens in networking and face-to-face -face discussions. Yes, I, I don't know about your ability to uh, take in and retain information at a live event, but there's something special about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there is. There, there certainly is. Oh, we have a question that came in from Mary. Mary asks, can I purchase access to live sessions? So is this being live streamed? Um, the keynote stage is the only stage that is live streamed. And yes, those will be available. Um, we'll start uh, probably around the beginning of April. We'll start um, uh, marketing those and putting that information right. out. Mm -hmm. But yes, the live stream on the keynote stage. And then later we have all the stages actually um, audio recorded. So those um, will be available at a later time. Marvelous, marvelous. And so Mary, we'll make sure that um, our tribe knows when the announcements come out that that's available. Uh, uh, Jack, uh, Jackie Ragsdale's Schaefer Koscheski. Now that's a long name. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, Jackie, have maybe you've been married three times already, and you kept the other Jackie Rags, Dale Schaefer, Korchewski. I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. As hey, was in hospital this past week. Sorry, total GI tract eruption. Waiting to hear if H. pylori. How can I avoid this again? Really good question. Really good question. And um, uh, we have to find out why this happened. So what set what set you up? What's the environment? in your body that set that up. Uh, no way to know without doing some investigation, Jackie. And that's certainly what our team does. And uh, any functional medicine practitioner would do that also. Uh, uh, you can go to consultations at thedoctor.com or you can go to ifm.org. That's the Institute for Functional Medicine and look for a certified practitioner um, to find someone who can walk you through um, what in your history set you up for this? I'm sorry this has happened, and I hope you get well soon on this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting, Dr. Tom, how much the gut drives the train of mm -hmm. this whole... Of this oh, whole yes. Yes, the uh, really good point. That, you know, the ratio is nine to one. For every one message from the brain going down to the gut, there are nine messages from the gut going up to the brain. So who's in control here? You know, the geek term is modulates. 
and I love that term, but it, well, all it means is hands on the steering wheel. 